What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? You know, recently I had a dipshit leave a comment on one of my videos telling me how they really hate that intro. So if you love being part of the heathens here at Godless Engineer, let me know down in the comments. But if you're here for today's content, we've got Nathan Thompson joining us to tell us what his best proof for a flat earth is. And trust me, you will be disappointed. So, if you're interested in getting disappointed by Nathan Thompson once again, then please stay tuned. One of the best proofs, I think, for the shape of the Earth is um, how water behaves. And water does not stick to the outside of containers. Um, you need something to contain the water. Uh, and it always forms a flat level surface when unmanipulated. And that's kind of my argument. And I, and I watched your video with D Marble earlier. Yeah. And, um, you know, you, you said it's a broad topic. It includes a lot of things. You went into buoyancy, viscosity, Bernoulli's equation, which actually taught me something because I'd never even heard of Bernoulli's equation. And props to you, dude. I run a really large group of researchers and I never learned about that. So thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, he was talking about water physics, which isn't a real thing. Um, it, fluid dynamics is, is what it's technically called, and it includes both liquids and gases. And so I guess I when I first watched the video, I was expecting like something along those lines. But I mean, he just basically said water's flat, therefore Earth is flat. Yeah, well, you mentioned some other things. You mentioned buoyancy, viscosity, Bernoulli's equation, but then fluid statics. And then I got to commend you again because you taught me something else, something interesting I had overlooked. Okay. So um, I'm just going to go to my notes. It's in my phone here because I did have notes on fluid statics. So when you said that, I had an underlined part that said uh, the surface oh, uh, of the container. But I'm sorry, you, was, cut out, you, you cut out there for a second. Could you repeat what you uh, the very yeah, first part? The underlined part I have is the surface of water is always level and horizontal whatever the shape of its container. And I'm um, always, uh, okay, um, that's the part I had underlined. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. But I read uh, fluid statistics or hydrostatics is the branch of fluid mechanics that studies fluid at rest. It embraces the study of conditions under which fluids are at a, a stable equilibrium as contrasted with fluid dynamics, the study of fluids in motion. Mm -hmm. it said hydrostatics offers physical explanations for many phenomena of everyday life such as why atmospheric pressure changes with altitude, a.k.a. we have a gradient, mm -hmm. and why the surface of water is always level and horizontal, whatever the shape of its container. So that's what D. Marble was saying. Nothing about viscosity or buoyancy or Bernoulli's equation, which don't do anything, really, in my opinion, to help curvature or prove rotation of the earth now the next thing you said well, is uh, well hold on nathan can i can i address that real quick of course okay so uh, i brought those particular topics up primarily because those are part of fluid like dynamic like like the topic of fluid dynamics what whether that be like uh, fluid statics being fluid at rest or in motion like the entire like uh, uh, uh um, um study of fluids in general is what i was talking about and i was just giving examples of different principles and different topics that he could possibly talk about when he was wanting to lecture people about quote unquote water physics so i was just giving examples of different you know uh, uh, um, uh, things that he could talk about, not that would help prove curvature or anything like that. And I get that fluid statics, it, it does do that, but the way that he was explaining it, it was not exactly very educational, if, if you understand what I mean. Like, he didn't explain, like, why, uh, why water conforms to the shape of its container, why it's level. Like, the reason why they're level, uh, in, in which doesn't exactly mean uh, 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 flat or, or whatever, um, uh, the reason why is because of gravity. Because, um, I mean, level is just perpendicular to the uh, force of uh, uh, the direction of the force of gravity. Okay, we get it. I got that's one of my next points. But I had four and a half minutes. You said I feel like he's talking down to us um, because of how he was going through the cartoon of the globe and asking you what colors it was and stuff. And I feel you. And I called Daryl Marvel and I talked to him on the phone. 
and I asked him about it, and he said, uh, you know, he's just taking it back to the basics because he, he feels like he's got to go back to uh, what he said was like a Barney level with uh, giant crayons and spell it all out for everybody. That was his words. But um, you mentioned uh, dry, drying your balls after a shower when he said that water doesn't stick to a, to a ball. And, like, um, I have two questions about that. Like, your balls, your testicles aren't spinning. So, and your testicles are not also not holding flat water. So, like, you laugh, Godless, but this is where I get triggered, dude. And I'm not, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. No, but. no, no. Look, uh, Nathan, sorry to interrupt, but that, that was actually KC who kind of mentioned it as, like, an offhand thing, and I left it in the video it be- because it was a joke and it was supposed to be funny and entertaining. It's not supposed to be an actual point or anything. I know, but I think we got to get past the showmanship because you say you're an engineer and, and, and get more into the science is all I'm saying. And and then, you know, so wait, because because I'm an engineer, I can't like joke around and provide um, entertainment in it, it while also providing some scientific commentary. OK, well, well, once. All right. I got you. That was my at eight minutes. Okay. You said you said, uh, well, before that, you said, I feel like he's talking down to us. But in 10 seconds into the video, you called him a, a dip. I don't even want to say it. 10 seconds into the video. And, and he didn't say any of that stuff. He didn't call anyone names or insult anyone. Okay. So, and then you said, I, I don't understand this whole level thing. Water seeks its own level. You said makes it sound sentient. Yeah. Um, and then you said level means perpendicular to the pull of gravity. But if that were true, godless large bodies of water would have a measurable convexity, a measurable curvature, a measurable downward vertical drop. Right. And it doesn't. And that was his whole point. And that's why he's been doing laser experiments, and I've been doing laser experiments. So, so Nathan, Nathan, I I get that you think that it doesn't have any measurable curve. But when we actually look at the reality of the situation, there actually is a curve. Like when you're looking out over the ocean and towards the horizon line, I know that you guys say that, you know, it disappears due to some kind of perspective or something like no. that. Some kind of weird thing. Hold, hold on. Let me, let me finish my thought here. And so when we take all of the actual measurements into account, we realize that the amount that is actually hidden and the amount that is refracted work out for however far you're away or how, whatever the measurements are, it, it works out due to the curvature of the earth. So I get that you don't accept that. And I don't know, like, I, I really don't understand why you don't. Where do the measurements work out, John? Where do they work out? Where They work out all over the globe. Okay, well, I've been to... Pacific Ocean, Salton, uh, Salton, or Salton Sea, the, the Salt Lake City Flats in Salt Lake City, Lake Pontchartrain, Lake Michigan. Where's Florida. the Salton Sea at? It's the one where the National Geographic lied to everybody and said the boat was disappearing over the curve when the water line was behind the boat and above it. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I guess I was I was more or less asking for its actual physical location because I it's in Southern California. It's in, it's in Southern California. It's got the second lowest uh, elevation okay. next to Death Valley. So okay, it's that, no, that's cool. Hot. I wasn't I wasn't doubting like whether or not it's a real place. I was just curious where it was. Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, that's where I was with the Nat Geo thing, and okay. they lied to everybody. Um, but then you well, said I mean, it, they didn't lie. But all right, I, I was there, and the water line was above the boat, so it can't be going over a curve if the horizon is above the boat. Mm. Well, I, I mean, I, OK, so I, I guess I'm not like without a visual, it's hard for me to really grasp what you're saying okay, well, here. Let me go through a couple more of these and then we, you can pull it up if you want. Um, but the, the water line is above the back of the boat and they're saying it's disappearing behind a curve. So it's got to be like falling into a hump in the middle of the lake or something. But I'll get to that in a second because we both agree lakes look flat. You said that later in your video, but you said water and reflections off water are poor mirrors. Your yes. exact words were poor mirrors. All right, you admit yes, that. Yeah. So, so Daryl Marble was showing perfect reflections off of water. No, the, no, it's not. It's not perfect reflection. I mean, okay. mirrors. Okay. Uh, right. mir- mirror. Look, uh, like mirrors. The actual mirrors that that we have 
are far better uh, mirrors than a puddle of water. Uh, water is not a good reflector. It does not uh, reflect the light in, in a, a very good way. It does reflect light, obviously. But what I'm saying is, is that they're poor mirrors, meaning that they don't they, they, don't, they don't reflect as much as like, a, an, an actual mirror. Now, while you're looking at the pond and it's very clear and it appears to show a really clear picture, it, they're Don, still very Don, poor mirrors. Let's be, let's be intellectually honest with each other. Right. That is a perfect mirror. How not would you a, define a perfect mirror exactly? Um, well, um, hold on. Let me make, give you one example. If I lock the screen, okay. so, okay, one second. Um, for some reason, my phone doesn't want to let me. So, lock the screen. See it? I do, I, do, I do see it. Okay, that's the same picture as this. It's a perfect mirror, John. That, that was my argument. That was D. Marble's argument. You, you didn't Marble define what a perfect mirror is. Like, well, can you define what... Bendy. There's no curvature. And so you already, you've said in your, in your video... It no, 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 no. The, well, I mean, there wouldn't be any curvature in that picture, but uh, the, because it's 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 too it's too you know small to notice the curvature on the Earth. But no, what what I'm saying is is that you haven't actually defined what a perfect mirror is. Plus, dude, you're showing me a picture on another device through your phone that we're having a conversation yeah. through Skype right yeah, now. And it, no, you can't give close. me that and then be like, oh, this is a perfect image. It's like, no, I mean, I. I, I, I don't I don't accept that that's a perfect mirror there. It's, OK, well, is the horizon is the reflection distorted or is it just a little bit more opaque? Is it just a less defined, has less definition? I, I, I think that it's a, it's a, a visual illusion that's going on there that makes it, it like your brain interprets it as being this ultra clear sort of picture. But I mean, it, it's not like, like I'm saying that the physical properties of water and the physical properties of mirrors that we have do not allow for water to be a perfect mirror. Well, John, um, I have a video on mirrors and glass and the guy in the video says they use molten metal because all metals when undisturbed are flawlessly flat. Those are his two words. Okay. I don't, I don't understand what, what, what does yeah, that flat. have to, what, what does that have to do with, with what we're talking about? Okay. Well, they're using liquids to make glass and mirrors flawlessly flat. Okay. And I'm telling you the water that I just showed you was also a mirror and flawlessly flat. Now, if we're skeptical, we can test it with laser. So, wait, are, are you are, are you adhering to what D. Marble said in that curved surfaces don't reflect light? No, and that was my next point. That was not his argument, okay? Curved surfaces like the Chicago bean, for example, you know what I'm talking about there? Uh, sorry, say that again? The Chicago bean, that giant um, mirrored bean in Chicago that people stand next to and take pictures. Have you seen that thing? Uh, I haven't, but I mean, I can grasp what you're okay. doing. Okay, it's a giant sphere that's, that's mirrored, and it reflects. So his argument and my argument, I can confirm this with him, is not that balls can't reflect or bulges can't reflect. It's that there's no distortion in the reflection they are perfect mirrors okay well okay so i'm still i'm, I'm still gonna fight you on the whole perfect mirror thing it's not a perfect mirror but also uh that would go back to the fact that you're not like high enough like you're not high enough in elevation for it to um for for you to be able to detect like a a uh, curve like uh, uh horizontally now you can detect what curve elevation? like what elevation can you detect curve huh at what elevation can we detect curvature? For example, like on Google Maps, what elevation can we detect curvature? Oh, Not I mean, saying that I, I don't. I don't have. I don't have those numbers right okay, well, now. What do you but, think on the globe? How high do you have to go up to see curvature? I mean, I, 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 okay. I know definitely as high as the ISS is because the ISS definitely sees curvature. But I mean, you can okay. see curvature way before that. 
So I'm not exactly, but but I get that you're trying to paint me into a corner of the fact that I don't know exactly what height it would take to visually see horizontal curvature. But regardless of the fact of whether or not I know that, I do know that at some point in, in elevation, you can see the curvature of the That's earth. That's the belief that you have, John, because you mm -hmm. haven't seen it and you can't even tell me at some point. What well, that no, no, no. I mean, just because I can't tell you doesn't mean that it's like some kind of like faith based thing. OK, uh, I well, mean, the answer's well, there. I don't have time to do all about, the calculations about, right now to figure about, it out. About what altitude? I mean, can you give me a rough estimate? Uh, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't even let's see the. Okay. So, dude, the ISS is when you're in zero gravity, and that was your example. Is when you get to zero. Well, no, I mean, I was actually just talking about dude, the ISS. Not exactly zero gravity, but I mean, yeah, there, there's, there's not. Well, it's near zero gravity. It's not actually zero gravity. It's near zero. Well, they sure float around like they're in zero gravity, even though they're caught on harnesses and in front of green screens and on wires and with uh, augmented reality glitches and bubbles in space and hairspray. Mm -hmm. Nathan says that the ISS is in zero G where it's not really zero G. And I mistakenly seem to agree with him in that portion. I would just want to clarify here. It's not zero G, but they are in constant freefall, which seems to simulate zero G. So that's just a little bit of a tiny clarification there. So, I mean, I, have you seen the bloopers from the ISS, John? Can you admit that some of the stuff that happens, like people drowning on live feeds when they say they're in space? I mean, no. bro, they're getting $50 million a day and you laugh, bro. And you laugh. I, I do laugh because everything that you're saying is ridiculous. So, I you mean, it's kind of funny. What do you mean it's ridiculous? You haven't seen the footage of NASA being caught on on wires and green screens and harnesses? And they, they actually haven't been. I, I mean, I've seen those videos, but I've also seen the explanations for those videos. And they're totally rational and reasonable explanations. They're for in it. space being caught on wires what's the rational explanation for wires in space john there, there, well the rational explanation is that there's not actually wires and you can tell that there's there not are actually wires, wires. do i have to pull up them you're, you're, no you're just you're making a baseless accusation wires. based on what whatever you think space? you see in, in a video that's space? it Thinking directions in space outside of the iss on spacewalks they're making 90 degree horizontal turns accelerating deaccelerating and curving that should not be happening if the ISS is going 17,000 miles an hour around space because of gravity, even though it looks like zero gravity when can, they float can around. You, hold on. Hey, can you explain relative motion for me real quick? Uh, well, the theory of relativity is only linear motion. So angular motion, relativity doesn't work with the ISS. It doesn't work with objects on Earth's surface because none of it's rel length linear. Re rel relative motion is is indeed uh, very, very much a real linear. thing regardless of where you are in the universe. Re I was saying relativity, the theory of relativity is only linear, John. Mm, can we no, well, agree no, on I mean, I'm not specifically talking about the theory of relativity. I'm talking about relative motion. That's not necessarily... Okay, so when you're in an airplane traveling straight and not accelerating or deaccelerating, you don't feel anything because you're in a closed container. And, and you're okay, okay, but how fast are you personally moving in, like, like in relation to the Earth on that plane? Well, it depends on how fast the airplane's going, but you exactly. think it's 500 miles an hour, but then there's no Coriolis where Earth rotates under the airplane. I fly yeah, all the time. No, I mean, there is Coriolis just Almost because every month. The there is no Coriolis. They don't me. account for it. The airplane flights are three hours to LA and three hours back from where I'm at if the Earth was rotating. That makes no sense, John. And the airplane. I mean, it makes no sense to you. That doesn't mean that it doesn't make sense. Count for Coriolis. What do you mean it doesn't make sense? It does, because the Earth's not rotating, John. There is no Coriolis. It doesn't move under hot air balloons or helicopters. I believe Bob from Globebusters would disagree with you about that. <laughs> uh, no, he wouldn't. I talk to Bob every single day, bro. Laugh it off. I talk to him every single day. If Bob proved it, then Einstein was wrong, because Einstein said no experiment, no mechanical device, no mechanical device on Earth would prove rotation or, or movement. 
He said I mean, that. I don't care what true. Einstein says. Like, I don't okay, care. Well, now you don't care what Einstein says? I never said quote. that I cared about what Einstein says in this particular conversation. Oh, oh, okay. uh, so, but, I, but I mean, you what you're doing what is an appeal said. to authority you here. You That's what, what you're doing. Said. You said you care what Bob said, and Bob does not say gyroscope proves rotation. You told me to go ask Bob. No, no, no. no. I well, I mean, I, I, okay, so I should be a bit more specific. I, I, what I meant to say was you should ask Bob's, I, I guess, results from his experiment, because his experiment proves yeah. that there is a spin to the Earth at, uh, at a rate of 15 degrees per hour. If you want to see the entire discussion, there will be a link down in the description for you to click. While you're down there, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Don't forget to stand up and use your voice and I will see you heathens later.